<laughs> I like that stick. <laughs> Hi everyone! Um, welcome to another work away video. When I usually start a video, I haven't done the thing yet. <laughs> but um, this work away that I just got back from um, was really strenuous. <laughs> And I attempted to start filming and talking about what I was doing, but then I just got so busy and tired that I couldn't keep up with the vlogging. So I've decided to do it now. And everything that you're about to see was from a work away I did recently at an olive farm. And it was in Northern California. It was so great. I'm so happy I went. Um, it's, uh, well, it was the middle of fall when I went. It's kind of more like winter now. But, um, when I went, it was fall, and that's harvest season for a lot of farms all over the country. Um, and I was there for the olives, <laughs> and I helped this, um, community, kind of family of people, um, harvest the olives to make into olive oil. So... Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> I uh, drove up the coast, uh, the Northern California coast. I didn't dress appropriately for the farm because silly me, it was November and I thought, oh, it's gonna be cold. <laughs> but I actually was, ended up being really warm the whole time I was there. And you'll see my, what I ended up wearing every day later on in the video. It's pretty, pretty hot. Not. <laughs> But um, uh, yeah, drove there. That was so cool because I've actually never done a work away where I drove there in my car. I've always gone in an airplane and had to be like super committed to the time frames because I wouldn't be able to leave physically until my next flight left. So this was really cool. I got to drive there. I got to like drive, leave in the afternoons and go, well the evenings and go get like food or just go say hi to the ocean. So that was really nice. Um, and I think while I'm talking, I'll like insert um, all the footage that I have or maybe I'll do that after. Oh, I don't really know. I'm not used to this. I'm used to doing like vlogging consistently while I'm doing something. I've written, I've written some of the information down because I just didn't want to forget any of the um, details. So they had uh, 1,800 trees. And olive trees take six years to bear fruit. So it's a long time to wait to have um, a product that you can make money from. <laughs> um, and so I got there and this lovely woman showed me around the farm <laughs> in a golf cart. <laughs> And uh, she showed me the olives and the trees and I got to, I even tasted an olive and they're really sour. Well, I'm here at the olive farm. These are the olive trees and they're kind of green right now but they have different varieties of olive trees on the farm and some of them are ready to go. I just spent uh, about an hour talking to Julie who runs the farm and she showed me around the farm and told me a little bit about the work that I'm going to be doing while I'm here. But it seems like a really lovely place and uh, yeah, looking forward to learning a lot about something that I have no idea how, how it works. <laughs> So this olive tree, see how they're mostly green? I guess they want to harvest when the tree's 70% green and 30% purple. Yeah, and it's all gonna happen in like a week's time. Ooh, this tree has some purple ones. Some purple ones and some green ones. So this tree might be, might be harvesting pretty soon. A lot of labor goes into the oil and of all the like olives that they collect, they hardly get any oil out of it, which is one of the reasons why olive oil is so expensive. These are the huge nets that they have laid down under the trees that will rake the olives onto. <laughs> 
So I'm staying in a big house with uh, other workawayers and other woofers and I think everybody's going to work together this week to put in a lot of work to harvesting and then uh, this weekend someone will come to the farm and um, put all the olives into a big machine that gets the oil out. There's the house that I stay in. Hi Shasta. What are you doing? What are you doing, huh? What are you doing? You always like to put your face between my legs, huh? You're so cute. You're pretty pooty too. Yes, you are. Sniff, sniff. Sniff, sniff. Oh, you're a cutie. You're a cutie. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. What's your name? What's your name, huh? What's your name? You're pretty. You're so pretty. Yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Mm, this tree is ready. Super. There's so many dark purple ones. It's amazing that it all happened so quickly. <laughs> Gonna try one. Oh, oh, it is so bitter and gross. Oh. It's so hard to believe there are some chefs who like really like that bitter taste. And she told me all about what it's like to have an olive farm and then uh, sh I uh, stayed in a large house with a bunch of other workawayers or woofers and that's also a first for me because usually when I do workaways I'm with family and I kind of like live with them in their home. But this time they had like a whole separate accommodation for the workawayers. And I was living with these really lovely people who I miss so much. Um, and they, we all work together to harvest olives. So, the first day of harvesting was tough. I, it was like eight hours of just raking olives off of the trees. Um, into nets so the olive trees aren't actually that tall and you can use a hand rake and they kind of look like like um, tools that children would use to like make sand castles at the beach <laughs> but it's literally it works really well you just rake the tree <laughs> and it kind of feels like um, combing the knots out of like a doll's hair or something or a little girl's hair <laughs> But uh, it was really kind of therapeutic and, and fun, um, even though I did that eight hours every day. <laughs> um, I did really enjoy it, and I had, I had such a good time getting to know the other workwares and, slash woofers. Um, so we raked the olives off the trees and onto a net that we've laid down under the trees. And then after we have raked and raked and raked, I move the nets down and rake and rake and rake, move the nets down, and then we do what's called lugging up. <laughs> and uh, there was this guy who's kind of like in charge of all of us, and when when the nets got full, he would say, okay, let's lug up. And it basically just means pull all the olives in the net in one spot and then scoop them into large tubs and um, put them in a golf cart to be driven down to this large barn they have. So we did that and it was really fun, it kind of felt like <laughs> that game um, Hungry Hippos. <laughs> Everyone had a tub, which I guess the brand is called a lug or something and that's where they get that term from. Uh, everyone had a tub and they you sit down around the olive pile and you just like scoop like frantic to get the olives in the tub. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then put it on a golf cart and it gets hauled off.
Oh, it's okay, you're fine. <laughs> So on the property they had a huge barn, really beautiful, and they had a huge refrigerator in the barn where all the olives were stored um, while we were harvesting them and they would later be turned into olive oil which is a video that I'm going to be uploading after this one how the olives turned into olive oil <laughs> but um, this video is mostly just going to be about the harvesting process pretty big barn Ooh. Squeaky. So they have this huge barn. Pretty cool. And I guess this is the olive oil machine. And it's really complicated. And hopefully I'll get to like see it uh, working later this week. I think Monday through Friday we're just gonna harvest, harvest, harvest. And then starting on the weekend, some guy who knows how to work it will start it up. Over here, they have this like huge refrigerator. <laughs> and I think the olives are gonna be put in here on the, in tubs until they're ready to go in the machine. Yeah, so the oil's compressed, then it's uh, spun, and then it's filtered. And then I think they put them in these huge things back here. Um, and this is where they sit for four months with nitrogen on top because they don't want any um, air getting to the oil. So it'll be filled to the brim with oil with nitrogen. And then after that, it just gets bottled and that's, that's it. It's done. After they've been in the big containers, I think they get transferred to these containers and that's where they can pour it into the bottles that they sell to like local grocery stores. Or they sell on, the, on a website or something. That was basically the day, just we got little 10 minute breaks like twice a day and then we had an hour for lunch um, and it was, it was really hard but really fun, really great and I'm really glad that I had that experience like all workaways I've ever done. I'm just so grateful that I got to experience that and learn new things and be put outside of my comfort zone and meet new people. So it was so wonderful. We got between 2,500 and 3,500 pounds of olives a day, uh, which I think was really pretty good. Um, sometimes they've had years in the past where they didn't get very many olives harvested for various reasons. Like I think I think they said one year there was like a, a frost that they weren't anticipating and the olives like froze or something and it like ruined them. So that really sucks. <laughs> But this year was, I think, their most productive year yet. And um, I think the trees were like maybe 12 or 13 years old by that time. So they've had a, like a while to produce olives. And it's very fascinating. I didn't know this. Olive trees aren't predominantly pollinated by insects. They're pollinated by the wind. So when you prune an olive tree, you have to be really careful. Uh, how you prune to make sure the leaves are all like going a certain way so that the wind can come through. So there's two raking techniques. One is using the little toy rake <laughs> and the other was the big boy method <laughs> and it was using um, two rakes that are motorized by a tiny motor to um, kind of vibrate uh, the olives off the trees and we called them olive ticklers. <laughs> but um, that was really fun to learn how to use that tool and um, it helped a lot to get all the, the majority of the olives off the trees.
there were there was me and one, two, five other workawares and uh there were one, four guys and two girls and i actually was so grateful that there was another girl because um her and i <laughs> We both like, got our periods while we were harvesting and kind of both realized how hard it is to do a lot of manual labor when you're on your period and you actually physically kind of can't keep up with the guys and it was kind of annoying but just that's just the way things are. So both her and I got like really tired and um, weak and so during those days the guys kind of like picked up our slack and used the motorized rakes and we just did the little hand rakes um but yeah that was really interesting so some of the trees that we uh, raked olives off of were called shot berries and i guess you know sometimes wind pollination doesn't work super well for whatever reason and sometimes the trees just produce berries little olives that are kind of shriveled and don't have any juice and so that was really interesting finding out that you know some trees just don't can't pollinate uh, as well as the other trees for some reason and then that product is lost and it was just really interesting to see like so even though we raked and raked and raked there'd still be berries left on the tree and there would be berries that would fall through the net um, and it was just kind of not like wasteful but it just it's just interesting I wonder in not just olive farms but maybe vineyards or or fruit orchards, how much product is left. So I was on an organic olive farm, which I'm really happy about. One, because um, they didn't use any pesticides, so while I was raking the olives off the tree all day long, I didn't have to worry about like inhaling any like toxic chemicals or getting it on my skin, so that was really nice. And also, um, I mean, organic olive oil I think just is it's better for the environment and better for your body so that was really cool to be a part of the a process that doesn't involve any um, chemicals unnatural chemicals but it did kind of result in I guess the olives are a little bit smaller so you don't get as much of a yield as you would if you used pesticides, which is just unfortunate. <laughs> but that's the way, the way it is. So my outfit. <laughs> I ended up, um, I got to the farm kind of thinking that the weather would be cool and it, it, there were some pretty hot days while we were there. Not super hot because we were near the coast, but um, enough to where I was regretting my wardrobe choice. And uh, luckily on the farm they had spare clothes, so I ended up wearing these really attractive shorts <laughs> um they were so huge and uh yeah so i just wore those shorts every day with hiking boots and uh like a t-shirt and sometimes i wore a hat um and i put on like layers of layers of sunscreen all day long to make sure i didn't get sunburnt but it was really cute um every day after work i would just like find olives everywhere <laughs> They were everywhere. They were in my shoes, they were in my pockets, they were in my clothing and my, like, I would find them in my room. <laughs> so, it was really funny that um, that happened. Oh, the other thing that was really nice about this work away was that I got paid for the extra hours of work. Most work aways um, require four to five hours per day in exchange for, a free place to sleep and free food but this place um, since we were harvesting they were, we were doing eight hour days they um, paid me for the four extra hours so that was really cool that's never happened to me before um, I always sort of go into a work away without any expectation of getting paid and just knowing that I'll be having like a cultural exchange and I'll be learning new things and meeting new people and that's enough for me but yeah, it was really cool to get paid, especially because of all the extra work. I've never worked that hard at a work away before. Really, it taught me, I mean, opened my eyes to the kind of work involved in agriculture and being 
a worker and I'm sure I don't I mean I don't know that much um, but having had this experience was definitely really really interesting and hard work <laughs> anyway I had an amazing time at this olive farm and the next video that I'm going to upload is going to be all about how they made olive oil out of the olives it was so fascinating so stay tuned and thanks for watching